Hello there, biology boys and girls, and welcome to our video lesson here talking about deoxyribonucleic acid. Say it after me. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Let's combine it together here. Deoxyribonucleic acid, all right? Otherwise known as DNA. In this video, we are actually going to talk about what DNA actually is. The information follows some of the text from 9.2. In another video, we'll talk about 9.3, which is DNA replication. But first, we need to know what DNA is, all right? DNA does four things for us, okay? DNA does four things for a living organism. Again, it's that genetic information. So it houses all the info that needs to be passed on from parent to offspring. So the offspring can carry out its daily life and its daily functions. Okay, so uh, the brown hair that you have, the brown eyes that you may have, the body build, the skin color, the height, the weight, etc., 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 that's genetic information that's coded within DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, it provides the instructions for life, okay, so kind of triggers and provides uh, the know how, the knowledge for your body, your cells to do certain things at certain point in times throughout your life. I like to refer to DNA. Steps three and four right here, things three and four. I like to refer to DNA as life's blueprints and also life's instruction manual. So a blueprint is uh, something that you look at to, to give you direction on how to build a certain item or a certain um, object, okay? Uh, but it doesn't necessarily tell you how. So DNA also tells you how, so it's also kind of like an instruction manual. So not only is DNA going to provide the actual information and the blueprints for, for uh, um, how to build a certain protein, or how a cell needs to carry out a certain function, but it's also going to tell the cell how to do that, okay? It's going to tell the cell how to do that. DNA's general structure is that of a double helix, and here are two diagrams of DNA. All right, we call it a double helix because it is double-stranded. This right here is considered to be one single strand, all right? And then you see it coiling around, okay? This would be another strand, hence double-stranded. And the helix is a term that is used to refer to its shape, how it's spiraled, okay? DNA is often referred to as a spiraling staircase or a twisted ladder-like figure. So there are three parts to this DNA double helix. The first part we're going to talk about are the nitrogen bases, or the things that make up the rungs of the DNA double helix ladder, okay? The stuff that's in the middle. We've got four of these guys, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, okay? And they are complementary to one another. So adenine is always going to bond with thymine, and cytosine is always going to bond with guanine. And this is going to be big when we go into DNA replication, and it's also big in understanding the general structure of a DNA molecule. The double-ringed bases are called purines, and the single-ringed bases are pyrimidines. And let's just take a look at these diagrams right here. So this looks a little similar, right? Kind of looks like those glucose molecules. Well, these guys are also con composed of a lot of carbon, okay? And carbon, its chemical geometry is to bond in pentagon-like and hexagon-like figures, okay? Now, they're nitrogen bases, though, because nitrogen is present, hence this little N in each one of these guys, okay? <clears throat> the purines are double-ringed nitrogen bases, like adenine and guanine. And the pyrimidines are single-ringed nitrogen bases, like thymine and cytosine, so they're a little smaller. So you can see how these guys would bond with one another in the center of that DNA ladder. Thymine goes with adenine. Cytosine goes with guanine. Guanine and adenine won't go with each other, though, because then that central part of the ladder would be too wide. Thymine and cytosine don't go together because then it would be too, too, too thin. All right? So the current bonding... Thymine and adenine and cytosine and guanine, it's perfect, okay? It keeps that ladder the correct width throughout. The other parts are the deoxyribose group and the phosphate group. Go ahead and take that little screen blocker off. Uh, deoxyribose, this is the sugar group, all right? It's a real similar um, compound to glucose, okay? So it's a glucose-like carbon ring that helps to make up the backbone or the side of that DNA double helix ladder, okay? Uh, it's also the, the uh, compound or molecule at which the nitrogen base attaches to. 
The phosphate group is kind of like our filler group here, okay? The phosphate group actually um, helps in bonding the whole backbone together. So this uh, phosphorus that has four oxygens around it, it's actually going to, uh, it's actually going to have, um, or it's actually going to connect the deoxyribose sugar groups to one another. Um, and uh, that's our final group for a nucleotide. That's the final component of a nucleotide. Uh, DNA, it's an extremely complex molecule. When you think of all the information that it houses, all right, DNA stores a ton of information. It's life blueprints and life's instruction manual. It's so large, so many thousands of nucleotides long, yet it's just composed of five certain elements. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and nitrogen. Insane. Just those five elements make up this insanely complex molecule. Last thing here. Ooh, that stuff got a little thrown off. The nucleotide. It is the smallest single unit that's used to construct a much larger DNA molecule, okay? Um, that's our major concept for today. One of our major concepts is understanding uh, the three parts that make up a nucleotide. A nucleotide could also be considered a monomer. It's the single smallest structural unit of a larger molecule. DNA would be a polymer, many of those monomers put together. So each DNA molecule is composed of thousands of nucleotides, and one nucleotide is make up, made up of a nitrogen base, a phosphate group, and a deoxyribose sugar group. And the molecular model for a nucleotide would look something like this, okay? Phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base, all right? That's all we have for this video. Pretty short, pretty sweet. Um, in class, you will be messing around with some DNA puzzle pieces, building a strand of DNA, adding a complementary strand, and making an actual DNA molecule, a double-stranded molecule of nucleotides that resembles a DNA molecule, all right? Hopefully you got some basics from this video. Uh, you should know the three parts of a nucleotide, and you know some basic information about what DNA does for us as living organisms. See you later.